Christine Bello. Breasts. Oh. <laughs> breasts are great. <laughs> Who doesn't like breasts? <laughs> the thing that breasts are best at is uh, breastfeeding children. They give them nutrition, it helps them to grow, gives them adequate vitamins. Breastfeeding came back into fashion in the 1970s after a really long time of um, not being used in the Wednesday. And there are so many women that forego the free nutrition that their body provides and instead of uh, some good formula. Baby Center did a study, did a survey, and they said 67% of mothers during the first six months uh, use formula. It doesn't say they um, consistently use formula, but they supplemented some of their breast milk for formula. So I'm here to claim that breastfeeding significantly improves the health of a growing infant. And I will do that by showing that breastfeeding protects babies from many illnesses. Breastfeeding contributes to a baby's future health. And it also uh, contributes to the health for mothers. We're not saying that breastfeeding should be done forever. You shouldn't be doing it while the kid's in kindergarten, while it's talking. Um, so all the statements reflect six months of breastfeeding. So my first um, subclaim is that breastfeeding protects babies from illnesses. The American Academy of Pediatrics did a study in 1997, they revised it in 2005, saying that breastfeeding decreases the incidence or, and severity of infectious diseases, including bacterial meningitis, bacteremia, diarrhea, respiratory tract infections, recrutizing endocolysis, otis media, urinary tract infections, and late onset of sepsis in preterm infants. Some of these are mild, and, uh, but can be very dangerous without observation. And the, the less a child is in a hospital or seeing a doctor, um, is less worried for the parent as well. The American Academy of Pediatrics said that postnatal infant mortality rates in the U.S. are reduced by 21% in breastfed infants between 28 days and one year. And that is a significant decrease because babies often have smaller symptoms that can grow. Baby Center uh, Medical Advisory Board um, cite a, an enzyme in breast milk that is called secretory immunoglobin A, or IgA, and that boasts immunity and protects against germs. It's important um, to breastfeed as soon as the child is able. That could be a, as little as an hour after, after birth. There's large amounts of S, uh, IgA in breast milk and it starts decreasing after. Breastfeeding also contributes to future health of, of infants. Uh, American Academy of Pediatrics and the World Health Organization say adults that were breastfed have lower blood pressure and lower cholesterol, as well as lower rates of overweight obesity and type 2 diabetes. And those are seemingly always rising in the United States. They're a consistent problem. Also less likely to develop allergies. Baby Center Association believes this also has to do with higher immunity contributed by the um, IgA. And children are always being diagnosed with allergies and asthma, things like peanuts and soy, and they're saying that breastfeeding reduces these. Breastfeeding is also very healthy for mothers. The Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality did a, did a long-term study in 2007 and said the history of lactation was associated with a reduced risk of type 2 diabetes, breast and ovarian cancer. And they go on to say that early cessation of breastfeeding or not breastfeeding at all is associated with an increased risk of maternal postpartum depression. And mothers that suffer from postpartum depression have an inability and at least their capability to take care of their child in the long term. So in conclusion, breastfeeding significantly improves the health of a growing infant. And I stated this by saying that breastfeeding protects babies from many illnesses, breastfeeding contributes to a baby's future health, and breastfeeding also healthy for mothers. Thank you, and you breasts. <laughs>Can you tell me what the time was on that? 4.14. Thank you.
All right, Christine, you start off pretty well with identification of what the topic is and uh, what the proposition is that you're supporting. It's clearly stated as a claim of fact. You have a good layout of what the secondary claims are. In, <coughs> excuse me. Internally, though, I think you did a good job labeling the first claim, but the second and the third claims just kind of uh, they pop in there. There's not really much transition from the preceding claims. There's no numerical signpost to signify them, and there's, they're so underdeveloped in terms of content that it's hard to even figure out if they are separate claims or just a subcomponent of that first claim. So I think you'd want to clean that up a bit. I thought you tried to e explain why it's a, a controversy, although I'm, I doubt that anybody disputes that breast milk is uh, healthy for the child. The question is how significant it is or how important it is. You did try and create some controversy based on the, on the notion that nearly two-thirds of women uh, generally uh, don't do the breastfeeding, at least not as long as they ought to be doing it. Um, I thought you cited uh, good evidence on the first point. Uh, you provide qualifications for your sources for the most part. Some of the statistical information gets rushed by a little bit. Gazunite, uh, yes. The, some of the uh, evidence is really broad. It's like, here's a quote that mentions 21 things that will be really good for kids that eat, bre you know, consume breast milk but I don't know how significant any of those things are. I don't know what the, what the difference is for uh, a kid that doesn't have breast milk versus one that does for any of the individual points. So it's kind of a catch-all phrase that's covering a lot of territory there. <coughs> and so the information, the grounds seem a little bit more specious that, as a result. All right, thank you.